This is a proper tool shed, isn't it? This is where real men hang out, not like me pansy annying around with cameras all day long. Now I wanted to talk to you some more about macro and close up. A dedicated macro lens is much like any other type of lens, except that it is a dedicated tool which allows you to get very, very close to your subject. And the closer you get to the subject, obviously, the bigger it becomes. But I just want to show you a very handy little accessory which will convert any ordinary lens into a close-up lens. And they're called close-up filters. You might be able to see here, I've got mine marked plus one to plus three. There used to be a plus four, but in true Mike Brown style, I lost it. So we'll have to just cope with what we got. Basically what they are is a piece of very good quality glass, which is ground into a magnifier, just like an ordinary magnifying glass, which you can stick in front of your lens. Cool, isn't it? Let's have a go with one and see what goes on. The place to begin is if I try and take a close up shot of this nut here with a spanner in the background, I'm just gonna move that over a little bit. The closest I can get with this standard lens, this is an 18 to 70 zoom, the closest I can get to it is going to be about, let's see, and you see the focus isn't even beep, there we go, if you can hear the little beep, I'll find it, there it is, autofocus, take the picture. That's as close as I can get to that nut with this bog standard lens. But if I had a close up filter, and you can probably guess for yourselves where this is going, where's the plus one, there it is. It allows me to sneak in closer and closer. If I add the plus one, which isn't of massive magnification, but it has some, here we go, I can get just that little bit closer. Let's make sure I recompose the picture the same. And you just kind of sneak in, listen for the beep of autofocus, and as long as you're getting a beep, you're getting closer. Now, right, did you hear that? There's no beep when I touch the button. It means I'm inside the focusing distance of the lens. So I need to back off a bit. There we go, I've got a beep. Take the picture. When you flick between those two, see, we've just kind of like got that little bit closer, haven't we, and a bit bigger. <clears throat> Pop on the number two filter. And we'll get in a little bit closer still. It's just an interesting test to see how close you can get. You could, of course, keep using your lens hood, and I really would recommend it. I'm not putting it on and off just for the sake of speed, really. Again, just keep sneaking in. Oh, we're still... Autofocus is very accurate. I recommend you use it. Here we go. Back off. There it is. Yeah, you can see we're just kind of like sneaking in closer and closer. Now we'll add the number three and we're getting even closer still. And of course, if I hadn't lost my number four, it would be really cool. Right, why isn't that working? I don't know. Here we go. It's just finding the right place. There it is. And take the shot. You get the general idea as you add a more powerful filter, so you're getting closer and closer. But there's a really cool thing with these, and that is you can stack them up. You just screw them one into the other like this. Now, I've lost number four, but I'm adding, I've got a plus three, a plus one, and a plus two. Between them all together, that's giving me a magnification factor of plus six, which is quite a lot. You put a four onto there as well, you're into plus ten, aren't you? Which is very, very close indeed. Now then, let's see what's happening. Oh, that's really close. In fact, Let's keep going. Here we go. Still getting in closer. In fact, it's now got so close, I can't get the spanner into shot, so I'm just going to move it because the field of view has narrowed. There it is. And... Now we're in very close indeed. So as you can see, Let's just flick between them. We'll go from very close, we're going back out. The difference between all of them stacked together and the number three on its own is really quite phenomenal, isn't it? They're really some quite nice shots. And as I zoom right into them, I can see that they're very good quality as well. Now, a good quality aftermarket macro lens, like a Sigma, is going to set you back probably 350 or so pounds. You could add another 200 or more if you were going to buy a Nikon or Canon's own. These filters are very, very good ones, and they cost me about £40 each. 
but you can pick them up for a lot less if you're prepared to do a little bit of research and a bit of homework, but always buy good quality ones. Another great advantage of these things from a cost point of view is that if you were to change your kit, say from Canon to Pentax, you wouldn't have to go out and buy another new macro lens to fit your Pentax camera. You can just pop these onto the end of whatever lens that you have. This lens is a 72mm diameter lens and that's what these filters are, 72mm diameter. So this thread fits precisely into the end of the lens. But look, don't worry about that too much. You can always hang them on the front by sticking them on with blue tack or a bit of tape. I do it a lot. If you want to do it properly, you could go to a shop and buy an adapter ring. Suppose you had a 62mm lens and you had a 67mm filter, you screw the adapter ring in for that lens filter combination and it will all fit properly. Don't confuse the millimetre measurement I'm talking about with your lens with the focal length. I'm talking about the diameter. This is a 67 millimetre diameter lens. That's this measurement from there to there. It's printed on the inside of your lens cap. It's not the focal length, which is an 18 to 70 millimetre. Confusing, isn't it? So all in all, close-up filters, great way to get yourself some close-up shots. Now I'm in a shed with lots of boys' toys. I want to play with a hammer. <laughs>